Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this conversation. Uh, my name is Chrissy Isles. I'm the Anne and Joel Arendt Curator at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. And I'm delighted to be here with Apal Junior Wache Yadon to talk with him about his work. I'd like to thank Jane Nowasakko and her team at the Yale Center for British Art for hosting us both today. And it's a great pleasure um, to be with you, Junior, and to be with you all. Um, a few uh, quick opening remarks about Junior. Um, Junior was born in 1984 in the UK and lives and works in London. Um, he received a postgraduate diploma from the Royal Academy Schools in London in 2008 and a BA in Fine Art and Painting from Winchester School of Art in 2005. And from this early background in painting, uh, Junior's work has developed into uh, performances and installations that fuse sound, photography, the moving image, uh, live performance and archival material in very complex conceptual works that disrupt the conventions and hierarchies of looking, listening, and our presence and that of the artist um, and other performers in relation to both uh, the objects, moving images, sounds, and, um, uh, and us in time uh, and space. Uh, and so the, the junior subtle synthesis of these forms is, is rare. Uh, and we're going to explore it um, and his ideas by looking at six works. And so we've got a number of images of each work and a short video clip um, for each one. So I thought we could look at them together um, and talk together about them and then uh, open it up for, for questions. Um, so uh, um, uh, I want to start with um, uh, this work, before, during, and after. Here, now, before, during, and after, here soon. And the date is uh, 2020 to the present. And uh, the first image here, we, we can see four drums, the front of which says here now, two cymbals, two microphones on stands, a large square photograph of leaves on the floor underneath them, uh, and a video monitor turned away from us and towards the absent player of the drums, the artist, and a triple sectioned white screen that creates a kind of a, a, a stage. <clears throat> then here we have another image showing uh, Junior playing uh, the drums. And here then um, uh, an installation shot of um, uh, the um, uh, microphone stands without the microphones, uh, the drum cases here soon implying something's about to happen, the artist is about to appear uh, and then uh, you can see uh, this uh, third um, iteration, if you like, where that uh, drum saying here soon is, is absent because here now implies the um, artist is about to appear. And then uh, we see in this one, the video monitor turned around, placed on the floor, here soon comes back, the drums have disappeared, the speakers are next to the uh, video, implying the speakers are for the video and not um, any sound that the artist is about to make. Um, and then here is um, another shot just to, so you can see what's on the video. And then here um, is um, the, uh, an extract from the video itself. Hey, Jane. Sorry. Hey, Jane, yeah, how you doing? Um, it's day one. Lockdown number two. I'm in my drum cave. That's all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had to listen to um, your rhythms and stuff. It's sounding cool. Um, I'm sure me and all the other drummers gave you plenty of kind of cool basic stuff, and it sounds like you're working away at all of that. So I thought I'd give you sort of the next lot of stuff. Um, uh, to build on that so you can kind of create some cool rhythms so um, there's a couple of things I'll cover today and I'll just I'll just run run through them all um, so let's start up with a warm-up um, uh, based on warm-ups you did before and um, we're going to introduce some different rhythms and, and try and get some more complex um, coordination going so let's start off with um, some 16th note single stroke rolls um, and we're going to keep like before rocking ball between the bass drum and the hi-hat okay. so one two three four one two three four 
and in the hands before we were doing eights, one and two and three and four and now we're going to do sixteenth notes, one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. So um, let's start. So um, we could of course watch that for a long time. So sorry to cut it off, Junior, but just to uh, start the conversation by um, going back to um, one of the many um, different iterations we've just seen um, of the work, and I wonder if you can talk about um, uh, the the shifts back and forth between these different states. Uh, before, during, uh, and after, and here soon. From those yeah, words. yeah, yeah. Um, I should say thank you for having me to, to start, and it's it's a pleasure to to speak with you, Chrissy. So, um, okay, um, let's let's talk about the the shift between the two states. So, what you see with this particular piece is there's two um, two moments. There's here now in which the, there's a drum kit that's assembled and I'm learning to play the drums. And then there's here soon where it's disassembled and it's all the drums, so where you saw the drum cases, they're filled with the drum pieces inside of them. And what you have in replacement is this video which captures moments of me learning, both uh, sonically and visually. So they're not they don't necessarily meet I sort of mon I sort of um, montage them together to make these videos in 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 the space time, and um, I suppose when I was in this at this particular moment when I was making this work, I had um, I had this situation where I had a week um, in the space and I was a week away. Other commitments, you know, just so so um, it was alternating. It was like a week of learning, a week of. Um, a week of these these moving image works that I made, and so with the videos, they were constantly updated each time. I, I every time I was learning, I was just at moments just recording myself um, sonically. I made sure I made I had this um, thing in my head that I was like I would record an hour a week of me learning just to mark my progress and reinstating it into these videos for the, the moments I weren't there. Right. Um, yeah, and so this was as as you. You can hear with Joe, who was one of the drummers that was teaching me, um, teaching me drums. All the all the percussions that I've been used that helped put this piece together and and was teaching me are people I'd worked with previously. So um, to begin with, they all made me like an hour's length. It was like four or five. Well, I don't want to, it was about five people that I was um, drawing from from lessons, and they um, they all made an hour's length video to begin with and that evolved into um uh, joe which you can hear he made another video uh, rosie came and did a in-person lesson within the space um then kieran did a, a zoom talk so it was all during lockdown period this was like the second lockdown or september october um, right in that, in that moment yeah I'll ask um, about that in a minute, but I wanted just to move on to this next piece, um, which is called Before Colon Compliments from 2022. Um, and in it, we can see that there's three performers. Uh, they're obscured behind this specially sort of built walled room with the bottom strip missing. So we can see their feet on the bottom edge of a cello. Um, we can also see um, on this shelf mounted onto the wall, um, photographic um, images, repeated images of a vase in the shape of a goldfish with a goldfish inside. Um, and then there's a white stage area we can see that extends from um, the, uh, the performers into um, um, the audience, if you like, or the gallery, um, and it extends into that area. And it kind of prevents the audience from coming near the framed work or the performers. And it also has a very um, um, sort of um, structural kind of visual um, relationship to the, the vertical um, white uh, rectangle, which almost looks like a screen. So, you know, um, here's another a more close up um, image of that, that, um, uh, that structure. And then here is a, um, a shot of the audience um, listening to the performers. Um, and then um, here is a closed circuit video camera showing the audience coming in. And this was below the frame photograph. And so 
this is what the performers could see because of course they can't see the audience. So they could see the audience only through um, this uh, surveillance camera. And then um, here is um, um, you know, footage of the audience um, so you can see from below, so you can only see um, their feet. So just going back to, if we look at uh, maybe maybe this image, um, mm -hmm. You know, Junior, what's one of the extraordinary things about your work is, is the way in which you really synthesize the language of, you know, the white cube of the gallery, the stage, um, you know, you're using the photographic, the, the, the wall, which is so much about painting and works on paper, but then you're, you're, you're stripping away that wall to just expose um, the performers, showing that this, uh, this is something live. Um, and then you know, the, the way in which you're, you're kind of obscuring and revealing, obscuring and revealing, and then this, you're creating a sonic space. Mm. So, you know, you're, you're really not allowing us to, to, um, to lean on the visual. You're not allowing us to, to just kind of read the space in any single way, um, you know, and I, I wonder if you can talk about the importance of sound composition collaboration and sonic space within these this other the kind of the, the kind of i want to say hybrid space um which in itself is kind of musical um but i wonder if you could talk about that i suppose yeah I, um to start with collaboration i um i think for me it's it's really uh i, I like this idea of exposing a process a process being a part of the work in some way and I suppose with collaboration, it's it, it's it sort of makes me sort of move towards those ideas that sort of um, dismantle ideas of genius or anything like that. Any of those sorts of um, trajectories that are associated with certain people or certain places, you know. And so with that, um, the collaboration is more the sense that um, the performers in this case, they um, give a new perspective or they show the limits to my understanding of things. So it's, it's almost like they are there to give another perspective onto something you're seeing. They are not really, um, yeah, because, you know, there, there's a sense that they're, they're improvising. There's a very, um, there, there's a very loose guidelines, if any. They are just within this space. And what often happens is this is sense of duration. So this is length of time in which you have these moments of flow that 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 um things can generally sort of take over and so with obscurity i suppose and that sort of sound space hopefully well the idea is hopefully the, the audience and the performers come and meet in the middle somewhere given you know you, you're creating a space in which you can spend a length of time in or you can just dip in and out of but ideally if you do spend a, a length of time in it you are we you sort of having this collective experience of some kind, in which it's being as well as it being generated live, it's being experienced in in the same in the same plane as the people that are generating these sounds. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, um, and you, you had another question, but I forgot what else. Well, the question, and maybe I can um, move to this piece, this related mm. piece, um, uh, was about the way in which your you're really fusing a kind of a, 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 the space of the gallery with its white walls. You then sort of strip the bottom of that wall away um, to to sort of, in a sense, expose. You know, the the, the, the modernist white cube um, is designed to kind of remove everything in it from the present and from mm. any sense of um, relating to the outside world and to kind of it's a sort of form of ideation in a way. And so you're kind of really refusing that and sort of exposing the the reality of the white cube in a sense but then you're 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 also working with it and so um in in this work which is during um colon compliments uh, also from 2022 um so a related work and you know it's like the previous one was before compliments and this is during compliments and then we see this this um single very long horizontal wall um, with a photographic image framed on a shelf and then underneath these four um, works. Can you talk about, um, uh, I guess my question from before, um, the relationship between how you create sonic space and, and visually, and then 
maybe talk a little bit about this work in particular and those four works on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, in, in terms of the sonic space, it's it's very much, um, as I was, as I was talking about process, this idea of process. It, it, it what's happened with most of these materials is that um, they they for, for some videos or, or performance or photographs, they find themselves in this live sort of performance setting where things are created within the duration of an exhibition or in this case performance, and then they are. Um, they're recorded in some way, they're created and shown at in another exhibition at a later date. So what you're seeing here is um, parts that have been taken from previous, the, the, the previous um, slide that you showed of, um, this is a continuation or another iteration of that very piece where the, the wall, the gap that you see it exposes the performance that behind the wall so you understand that there's something lives happening but at the same time I, ha I had a video camera there in which I was recording the audience so I'm capturing the same view as what the audience are seeing of the performance I'm capturing that of the of the before of the viewers sorry and so on these four monitors is that edited video from London so this is in Edinburgh this is um fruit market in Edinburgh and previously that was a part of um uh, RIA uh, live um, live art performance live art performance commission right. and so these both last year and so um again with the, with the photographic print it's it's going back to those ideas of collaboration and extended um these, this idea of extending beyond you know knowing there's understanding your limits of understanding is that's taken from a test prints so when I go in, um, and print when I make work to be printed digital digitally printed um, I make various exposures that I give to um, the digital printers and I give them the full image of these digital prints and then they choose a section from each the same section from this from these various exposures in which they compile and put onto one one piece of, of paper depending on what I decide I'm what I, depending on what I think I'm planning to print it on so I have a sense of what the colors will look like um, right. and they, they that's a selection that they make so quite similar to the improvisation of the musicians, they're taking on that same position where they choose it. And so what I've got here on this on this print is the reverse side, it's the side two, where I've chosen, is that's my selection of the, the various exposures in which they've um, repeated. Yep, yep. Um, and, and, and again, this, I, this, this, so most of what you're hearing is, is being created live and it's this sense that um the sense of flow in, in what i mean by that is it's it's this you know it's this moment where you're so you're giving the work into to the actual experience of space and again with these musicians they're not the same musicians they are um so in london the previous piece previous version you saw they were um a string trio um and they were responding to the audience as they came in and they're sort of making a soundtrack in some sense of people as they enter the space through that um, live camera, um, mm, what do you call mm, it, uh, mm. CCTV feed. Right. And so that's recorded again. That's that's created a new layer. And so what you what you've got here in in um, Scotland is you have um, the performers behind this wall have changed. So you've got a, a pianist, you've got a double bass player, you've got a drum. And you've got a, a, a wind player who's playing the saxophone, the flute, um, two, you know, two saxophones and a flute. And, and so he's able, so they are listening to London's recording on monitors and the audience are just hearing them play. They can't hear London, only the, so this is, it's creating a new layer in that sense. Wow. Um, and so, you know, and so hopefully the next time this is taken on, those layers are combined and they, you know, there's this, this idea that they could become a moving image work with along with the video from London in which they become something else. So there's this sense that they, um, these things are sort of, you know, I'm quite interested in the parameter life sort of being a bit lucid of, of, of defined mediums or, you know, defined yeah. moments. Yeah. I mean, this, um this interconnection between mm. past, present and future. And you, 
I think it's in a very, very strong and in terms of process to visual way in um, this installation, you got to just see uh, a few different um, shots of, of this piece um, uh, called um, um, Before uh, Colon Socialized, Circulized. Oh, no, 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 that's, this is um, Before Adaptive Rhythm. No, no, sorry, I even forgot myself. <laughs> sorry? Um, after, after Based on Narration, this piece. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So um, we've got, um, right, sorry. We've got, um, um, based on narration, we've got a, a wall with vertical section of color photographs um, of okra uh, and black and white photographs of okra of tinted green and then black and white. So you, know, you can see this kind of printing process um, um, on, on the wall. Um, on top of which uh, you can see three sort of sound panels um, um, in green and then on the left a wall with um, orange um, sound panels and the walls painted orange and then moving around the space you, you'll, you'll you then see as you walk into the space a red wall with the red sound panels um, you can see um, in, in speakers there with a, a surface and then um, um, drums underneath and there's another shot showing those drums and the drum cases, um, the video monitor, the speakers again, um, and a, a black wall to the right with these um, sound panels um, in black. Uh, and then if you turn around again, this is the red wall with the red um, sound panels face on um, <clears throat> with the, you can see on the right hand side, the orange um, and the black uh, wall there. And then on the other side um, of the red wall, you have the black wall, <clears throat> excuse me, with an image um, um, from a Russ Mayer um, movie. And so it's a very, very complex work. And then um, uh, we can also see then, uh, here's a close up of the, the, the green um, okra um, images and the sound panels. And then um, a close up of the drum, just so you can see the, the, this, this back and forth between you know, the, the, the physical instruments and the carrying of that sound, the physical instruments that make sound, the carrying of that sound. Um, and then you see, um, here's a detail of a, a close up of um, a image, a photographic image of rice, which has been wallpapered onto that top surface. Um, this is incredibly complex composition. And then introduced into uh, this entire installation is a video monitor um, and, um, um, that's against and between the sound panels, the red sound panels. And then um, here is what you see on the monitor. So just going back uh, a, a minute to um, there's so many wonderful installation shots, but maybe this one. Can you talk a little bit about um, this this composition? Because it almost feels like in this work, your 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 training as a painter is 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 coming out. Your your engagement with color um, is really um, strong here. This is a, an earlier work, so it's from 2019. Um, so I wonder if you could talk about this work and also what we are seeing on the back of the red wall here. Uh, and then um, its relationship also to um, the appearance of um, the um, the video that people then sit on the floor and watch. Yeah, um, so I, I suppose, yeah, there is a relationship to painting in the sense of like, I was, you know, I was researching, you know, I was quite interested in this uh, Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delight, that, that painting in terms of just this, um, in in relation to this relationship to this idea of the exotic that because it's sort of this exotic play that goes on um you know he's sort of influencing he's influenced by the outside world outside of this sort of Flemish world I suppose you know um and it's a time where there's this um this sort of buzz of what people you know he has peers that are going to various places in the world and depicting and what they see in terms of the new foods that they come across, new animals and all these sorts of things. And here is an artist that's in the same place, um, giving this information from his peers of like what things are looking like. So there's this sense of 
there's quite a fantastical sense to it all because it, you know it's like oh you know this um, image of, of of things a bit like uh, what's that about? It's a bit like that Henry Rousseau, you know, he's sort of depicting jungle, but was always in France, you know, that sort of thing, you know. Um, so I was, you know, I was, I was thinking about those ideas of 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 um, you know, this just uh, playing around with ideas of um, not this not just the fact that it's an amalgamation, but this idea of it being this contradictions and uncertainties within the ideas of thinking about the ideas of exotic in some way so within the painting you know there's people from everywhere within there and it's sort of it's this sort of orgy of things going on within that painting so i you know i was just that was a starting point and i started thinking about um ross myers i, I ended up working with this ross myers piece which was taken from up um you know just for the just for the, fact, the pure fact that again it has this this is sort of it's used on this dark side of the space and it's this um less desirable aspects of 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 histories or or developments so you know when you think about um well this is exploitation this mm -hmm. movie maker um and you know there's this relationship to that sort of thing but you know and it's as it's less desirable in a sense but at the same time it's sort of um it's connection to technologies in some ways and how they how it's affected that um you know you think of vhs and and you know these various things as well as the fact that you know when you live in my position in england and being influenced by you know having a day-to-day -day basis you're seeing these things you know, I don't think there's a day gone by if I was to watch that doesn't, I haven't seen something from America, for example, or, you know, you having these um, exotism in a sense of collecting, collection in some ways. And I suppose that's where the speakers come in. Right. The speakers are domestic speakers as well. There's this idea that, you know, how does that transfer today? And again, with these ideas of contradictions and, and, and that sort of play in some way, you know, record collection, you know, you have that same parallels in some way where you're sort of, you, you're getting things from somewhere or you're collecting um, otherworldly things and, and always there's a connection or there's a need, there's a human need for that sort of thing. But at the same time of, um, you're not really moving, you're sort of, it's sort of taking you out of the day to day. And so yeah. with this, um, in relation to the wash, I was looking at the, the, the sections of the paintings and how, you know, there's this orgy, but then there's this bad section of it so I've, i i am formally made that within this space i had this um scene that was taken from up where it's just a face that emerges and right. you know there's a sense of ambiguity to the to the identity of this woman that's um that's doing that unstipping which again is this is sort of me exploring these ideas of exotic in some way um and so i was you know i i suppose i i had um what was interesting is the fact that, you know, I suppose these things would have been shown in cinema. And so I was thinking, oh, you know, when you have these moments in cinema where there's this whole unzip, you're getting the whole thing explode, the whole screen explode. So I kind of wanted that. So this, as you came in, you're looking up, uh, she was looking down on you sort of thing as she right. unzipped and that's what repeated. And with the drum, so this, this later, this space, this, this darker half in relationship to that painting and the darker section of that painting, this yeah. dark half was then adapted to, um, to, to house the performance of the drums. So the, the drum kit that you saw on the other side of the space gets, um, yeah, this gets reassembled in, into, the, into that section of the space, in which I invited um, this great drummer, Hector Plimmer, a uh, great musician, really, I should say, but a great, a, a great drummer, um, Hector Plimmer, who came and, again, sort of was playing the drums and had these various moments he had i think we had two or three um just different moments in which he's just playing and what you're seeing on the video well not only did that get the drum get reassembled but the sound panels the red sound panels and some of the black panels form a wall so so you can't you know so the audience can't go past that that area so these red sound panels get moved to the right i believe wow. and um i think the the orange and the black also fill that space so then it becomes a, a whole room in which you, yeah, becomes a whole room in which you're sort of, that's happening on that half. 
And then I'm trying to record him, trying to avoid his body. So I'm just right. recording his, him playing without having the body involved. And I suppose that's, again, this when I have these walls or have these distance from the, from the viewer, I'm sort of um, playing on those, um, you know, the sort of associative thinking of, 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 of bodies or, 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 or um, you know, that sort of, it, it was, you know, initially it stems from like, you know, my own experience. I'm thinking about my reality as a black person and the, the things that that comes with that sort of, um, you you know, that sort of impartiality that, pe that people may have and that sort of removing those moments in, in, in some ways. So, um, yeah, so he's playing and I'm trying to capture him, this, the drum kit while he's playing. And so this is done on a DSLR camera. And as I plug the camera in, um, I lose the view of the, the camera. You know, you have on DSLR cameras, you have these little viewfinders where you can see. That's the only way you can see what you're recording. As soon as you plug in this feed, I can't see that. So the audience is seeing, they're filling the gap. The audience is seeing what I'm trying to record while he's playing. Again, this gets reinstated into the exhibition and it forms a video along with these colours. And I should say with these colours as well, they were in relationship to, to the Bosch's painting. So there were, the, there were like nine colours that were used for uh, the Garden of Earthly Delight. Um, right, and, and, and also, because there's, there's one of two, um, if we go on to this next one very quickly. Yeah. Also, we see you using these kind of um, abstract. Um, the, the screen is filled with color, and so it's almost like you're, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're animating the the walls, the, the painterliness of those walls, and um, um, into film with those intervals. So sometimes it's there's a, there's a black interval, and then and then um, the color again, and then the detail of the uh, the drum kit, and so. You know, you're 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 folding that synthesized space into um, the film itself, which is really, um, you know, again, kind of even deepening those those interrelationships you were talking about and and that that, that idea of process. Um, we're getting a little short of time, so I don't want to make sure we just look at a couple of other um, works. This is um, before Colon socialized. Circularized, linearized, artificialized, corrupt time from 2022. Um, and again, this set of documentation images of the work just shows it's kind of shift from one state to another. Um, here is um, a white wall with a, a frame poster with a lettering Montego Bay um, and these layered um, kind of acetate prints of your hand um, mounted um, in front of this slightly ruched and um, sort of white curtain. Um, and then we see the same wall with four vertical photographs of these leaves and cream berries with another frame photograph um, on, on top of it to the left. Um, and then on the back um, of the wall, uh, we see that the wall has um, these three struts and the title of the work is um, um, placed vertically on each section um, of the wall. Uh, and the sections are visible from the back um, and there's sections on the front when the photograph of the leaves is on there, uh, but otherwise invisible. So, you know, this, this layering again. Um, and then um, you also then turn that wall into a screen. Here are two shots of um, the wall turned into a screen at night onto which um, it's projected um, a film that we'll see in a second. Um, and there is the space with the, the same um, curtain behind, uh, and then uh, the the um, film playing, uh, and then you know, here you can also see a, a, a musician uh, playing a trumpet live with uh, with you in the background uh, mixing the sound, um, and then um, here is um, an extract, a short extract of the video, um, is uh, two hours long from the video. 
which begins with the black. So we could watch that um, for a long time, but let's just go back to this image for a second. Um, maybe you could talk a little bit again about how you shifting, how you're shifting the space again from um, um, gallery space um, where the wall operates as the wall for holding art to a kind of cinematic space, um, night, day, live music, you mixing live, and then you know, um, how, how we as the audience experience this work over time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, with, with, this, with this wall, it's, I should say really, the, all the material that I've used for this, this particular piece is just um, research material. So it's all things that I've, like, um, like with the Montego Bay post, post, that kind of influenced the previous piece that was shown, the one that was influenced to Humanus Bosch which I saw this poster in this um, archive um, and it sort of re reignited. Um, yeah, that sort of reignited my ideas of, of the, the, the one, the previous one with the uh, sound panels, colored sound panels and things like that. It was from looking at posts, I went, I was, I was helping at June Giovanni's, um, um, was it Black Film and Video Archive? And she had this poster in a thing and it suddenly just, it made me revisit so much. So basically this, so I decided to buy the poster as well. So these are just materials that I've just like, I've just had around. And so you, even with, I think of the next two slides, the one with the wallpapered wall, you see, um, yeah, this one, you see like, um, that's Michael Johnson from the 1996, his golden shoes, the 1996 Olympics. Again, it's just the stuff that I've just got there. So I'm using this wall almost like a just a just a wall to drop research onto. It's always like trying to understand and make sense or trying to create from this this moment of process. Um, and so really this piece then becomes four chapters. And everything is um sort of a mixture of of previous or sort of things that are just rolling around. So the audio is was recorded as part of nocturnal creatures which is this um event that happens every summer whitechapel gallery in london um in which i invited three uh, sound artists and musicians to sort of it was within this particular space that was like a bar and so they were dispersed amongst the people that were there just uh, drinking and there to you know socialize and experience some art um and so they were well, just they were making these sounds so making all the sounds you can hear was mixed by them and I'm just, um, I'm just sort of mastering it and playing it out loud to the audience. So you couldn't really see where they were coming from. They're just in there amongst people. And so that's been, that was like 2019. 
that was summer 2019 so it's just one of those things that I, you know urgency of wanting to use these things but not really um, knowing what to do with it and so I decided to put it all into this exhibition at Southwark Park Gallery which is this concrete church it's like I think it's the <laughs> first concrete church in Britain if I could be wrong but like <laughs> but um anyway I decided, <laughs> decided to put it all into this um to this mix and marked they marked this four chapter work so what you see is the video is the first chapter which is two hours long and then it's the Montego Bay poster in which I'm copying um the lady's hands in the poster um, I've repeated that gesture again it's this idea of this exotic uh, quite it's this intriguing this uh, concept um and I'm sort of playing around with and then it moves on to, from this post to this video, then this, that's chapter two. And then it has the Michael Johnson with the wallpapers, chapter three. And then on chapter four, it's like this montage where it has these videos. It's not in this, this selection, but there's another chapter where it has the poster, the, it has a mixture of things going on. Right. And so with each chapter, that sonically that's marked by inviting uh, musicians to come in and respond or sort of be involved I should say, within the, the adding to the sonic uh, landscape that's already there from Whitechapel. So what you see with the trumpet player, they're, they're recorded live again and then added into the exhibition space. So, you know, he's, he, so he's playing live to that sound. And then I, for the next chapter, that marks it. So once it's recorded, I put that in again. And so there's trumpet, xylophone and um, melodica. So there's three, these three different moments. The only thing that didn't have any sort of inter interruption was the video. So the video marked the first two weeks. And so every two weeks of this eight week long exhibition, there'll be a new um, shift in that sense, um, in which I'm editing. And I should say as well, again, it has this thing with the drums, where I've, the, the first piece that was shown, where I'm sort of learning to play the drums, I'm with, behind that curtain, I made this sort of recording studio space and I'm still learning to play the drums within that space. So mm -hmm. I use exhibition settings and work and moments that can house this me developing or um, progressing my skills learning as the moment in which I learn how to play. So yeah. um, that's, I've got, you can might be able to see it in the background. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm not, so the, there's a strict rule in which I only play when it's exhibitions or it's like, a, you know, in that sense. So I relearn and learn, you know, learn and sort of come back to relearn and so it has that sort of process to it. Um, so that was happening there as well. And so that's something that's continued. So it's really just like a research moment, I suppose. Yeah. So the audience come in and they have this, because um, it's electronic and it's amazing acoustics in the space. So you get like this real escalating sound that goes on. Mm, mm, yeah. um, we're running out of time. So I just okay. want to uh, leave time for questions and answers um, and discussion whilst also just um, looking at this last work, we're just going to um, um, take a look at before we uh, open it up to the audience. And so this um, installation is called Before Colon Adaptive Rhythm 2018. So again, we're going back in time a little bit. Um, and here we see this um, large projective image on the wall, um, shaded pink, the costume um, 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 in this, um, moment in, in the film with a sound panel to the right. And then on the other side, we see this kind of structure, which is sort of almost like a sound booth, sort of little architectural kind of composition that's also almost like a multi-screen um, um, surface um, with these different projections um, on it. Um, here's a detail of that inside and another detail um, and yet another detail where again, we see Montego Bay and then see that um, that um, uh, overall kind of falling onto onto um, the print. And then here's another moment in the film with the, with the costume. Um, you can see also the different colors. So again, color important in this piece, and the different colors and the different um, not only um, size but also um, shape of the different um, screen areas in this um, kind of sound booth construction. Here's another detail of it. Um, here's someone uh, looking at um, the film. Um, and there's another detail and another. Um, and then here, let's look at the film itself. We click. Thank you. 
can you tell us about the film and also about um, the installation? Let's, um, let's yeah. maybe, um, um, go to a... Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I can, yeah, this one's perfect, actually. Yeah, I could talk about it. Um, so with, it, with this work, it's... Um, so what you're seeing in this particular slide is the sound booth that I've sort of recreated um, and within that, again, I'm sort of just putting in these moments of research or thoughts. So you see um, Antigua Bay posters in there. And even with these, these spotlights, these are actually sound sensory spotlights that we use for some previous work that I'm um, sort of reinstating into this work somehow and seeing how that works. But basically there's two windows that uh, I invite uh, percussionists to, to, to come and, um, um, I should say, so with a video that was made um, with a fixed camera and I had this um, acrobatic um, capoeirista come in and they're doing, they're wearing this costume, which my partner made and he's, and he's sort of moving around in this, in this costume, ah. it's like tissue paper. And as they move around in, in, around in this fixed camera angle, they leave the frame and continue sonically so they're picked up on this microphone, which is a 7.1 surround sound microphone. And so I sort of um, shift that into an installation setting where I have these various colors that I'm in reference to. I'm just thinking about, um, I've been looking at certain cultures where, where certain colors that sit next to each other mean certain things. And so I have that on the video with this performer sort of leaving the frame and they continue sonically through the space in this. So it's a 7.1 surround sound installation. Um, and each performer sees this, the same edited version that's 15 minutes long. And so they all see the same version as they come in. And so I invited, initially invited uh, someone who played the Boran drum. Uh, Boran drum comes from Ireland, for those who don't know, it's Boran drum. There's a, there's a talking drum from Nigeria. There was a hand pan, um, which I believe Swiss, Russian, Swiss. Um, and then there was the uh, trap drum, so the drum kit that you see, I invited somebody in to do that. And then we, what you saw as well on one of the slides was um, a, a, a Bert who came and did, uh, he did like electronic uh, beat mixing. So that was the five initials, um, people that made sounds. And so they see the same fight, they see the same edit. And so we, they watch it however long they need. And then the, the, the sound is turned off on it. And then they start making their own sounds to this thing. And that's recorded. And so that's recorded in that booth, either by myself or um, um, Phil Safati, who was, who was um, supporting me on this project. Um, and that gets reinstated. It gets re-spatialized by myself. Mm. Um, and, and I make a new edit of the video. So depending on what they create, I sort of respond to what they create and make a new edit of it. And, and that's how the work formed. And so this work, initially, those the first there were five percussionists, it moved on to what you saw in that clip, which was the Taiko drums. And um, it's with Taiko drums from Japan and then uh, timpanis has been added as well. So timpanis, which I think is Italian. And the reason why I'm saying where they're from is because, you know, it was just this idea that each culture has their own version of the, of the drum, each culture has this sense of uh, their own sense of rhythm and drum, and, and as, a, as a as a tool to communicate, as well as to involve in some sort of cultural practice. Mm. So it's really important that it's a new type of drum each time it's shown. So each time it's shown, something new is added. And so it's again, it's this generative piece that could grow depending on how many times it's shown. Right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, Junior, we could go on for hours, but um, I want to give uh, people a chance to ask you some questions as well. So sure. I'm going to sh stop sharing my screen and um, look at some of the questions that we have. We have, I think, five. Um, so um, I'm just going to um, stop the share and hello and look at um, the Q&A. Um, so. The first question is, who are some of the great musicians, living or dead, who have influenced your work and who, who do you admire? 
for dead. Oh god, that's a hard one. That's a tricky one to answer. I don't. I don't. Um, I find it very hard to stay fixed to anything like that. I just um, live or dead. That's influenced my work. Um, I mean, you know, in terms of in terms of learning to play the drums and that sort of energy, I suppose I always look at people like what well, I've always been referencing people like Art Blakey. And I'm quite into that sort of um, that sort of way in terms of my learning drums. In terms of music and things, it, it's it, it's quite hard to answer that because I it's quite broad. It's really quite broad. Um, yeah, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so here's a question on, uh, from um, um, Greg Warmby. The drum kit looks loud. The, the instrument contains a power that can be easily released. In the same way, um, uh, a speaker or amplifier looks loud, even intimidating and possibly confrontational. The sound dampeners, reflectors, refractors are meant to direct, um, uh, contain or dampen or capture or at least control. So I can't help. Um, uh, but feel a comment about power exchange and the dynamics of power is happening, thinking about the transactional relationships of power, uh, of, sorry, instrumentalist and um, audience. Um, it's rather nice to think of this time of, type of relationship as being less of a traditional audience participant and more of a turn towards connecting, directing, and moving along. Uh, and so Greg is wondering if this is something you think about as a power exchange. Um, I suppose, in, I think really I'm coming from the point of like, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, sound is something that, you know, it's, it's, it's um, it, you find it quite hard to, um, especially with percussion, I suppose, mainly of the thing I've used, it's quite, hard, it's quite hard to be impartial to it. You know, you either, and it also, you can't avoid it, you can't, you can't sidestep it, especially when you hear it within a space. It's it's it makes itself present, so which I'm quite interested in. I like that sort of thing. Is, you know, this idea where things, you know, I, I suppose this idea where things can be turned down as well, but they can't really be turned off. And you know, I'm talking about that sonically in terms of as well as linking that to things culturally. So like, you know, you can have you can have moments where are less um, obvious. Or, or, you know, and so the relationships, what that's what the kind of one I'm making with sound. Sound is sort of, it's there. It's it's very much there. Um, even when you, when you, even when it's not audible, it's, it's, it's that presence it has. It's more my thing. So, um, yeah, I think it's more, that's more my standpoint, really. Um, um, then there's a question, what are you working on next? Or what project would you like to make happen? Ah, well. I'm sort of re as I say, I'm always trying to. Um, I'm finding new moments for kind of drum learning to shift. So that's like that could possibly potentially be a lifelong project. Um, mm. So I'm sort of doing that. I've got. Um, I'm trying to revisit that for an exhibition of some kind, where I'm learning within a space of the duration of exhibition. Again, trying to move away from this depiction of the body and trying to capture a moment. Of, of me and that's hence why you can I think you can see like a snare there which I'm as I say I've got the strict rule it's only for the exhibition setting so why I've got it here is just to um, visually understand how I might do this yeah um another question from Reese. um can you talk a little bit about audience time and sonics in your work audience Reese. hi Reese. <laughs> Reese Ewing yeah <laughs> So add audience time, audience time and sonics, sonics, sonic. sonic. Um, sonic. Um, I mean, the audience. Why? I mean, I'm I'm quite in terms of audience. I'm quite interested of in having them present. Just giving that option. So, um. You can either dip in or dip out with the work. It's you. It doesn't require you being there at any particular moment. The audience is, is essentially, it's, it's, I'm trying to flip that um, position of the performer as the sort of the person that's there to please the audience or, the, or is, is there for the audience or is, you know, that sort of, that sort of position or, you know, um, 
that balance of the audience having the greatest say in some way. It's, it's, it's um, it, you know, that ideas of looking or being looked at and, and versus them. So um, the sonics are sort of created often from the audience's presence. You know, the audience to sort of make, that's what makes it, um, that's what makes it the, the thing it becomes, you know, in some way, especially when it came to the piece of um, yeah. um, Rhea, yeah. that, that particular piece of the wall. So I suppose audience is, is very much that, um, it, as I say about this idea of flow again, it's this idea that the longer, if those people that decide, if you decide to spend time with the work and also with the musicians, I should say most things are given five hours. Most of these uh, performances, or most of these moments of uh, processes are usually five hours. Um, if it's a live performance piece, because that's just the duration in which the performance is going on. There's usually other things that are happening. So like with the Rhea piece, um, there were various other performances that were taking part in, in this. So that was just started at six. It finishes at, you know, finishes at 10 or what have you. So, um it's 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 that idea of flow and that that idea that something takes a while you know eventually when you sort of lose you're giving yourself freedom there's a sense of freedom which the audience have as well as the performers i right. suppose so because they can't because they can't see what's going on mm. you're also giving as well as giving myself some free space of space of freedom you're giving them some sense of freedom in sense of it they go beyond the fact that they are just um, making music, I think it then becomes a point where they can just be, you know, sometimes just get a bit, a bit frustrated at the length of time, or just get a bit silly, or you know, or just get into it and just lose themselves into it. And then hopefully, the the audience share that with them. So you you, you come and meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm always on the other side though. So I don't know. I'm always behind the wall. <laughs> No, I, mean, I, I think that, that that idea of duration yeah. is um, not only applicable to the to the performance, it then folds back into the installation and into the the, the other aspects of the work. So that you know, your 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 the whole way in which you are asking us to think about time and experience time um, in this very layered way is 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 really um, um, you can even see it with the way in which, uh, say, in the last um, video or the one before, every note, it seems like it's causing the image to change. Um, mm. So there's a kind yeah. of almost syn synesthesia there, which is taking further those experiments from the beginning of the last century with the relationship between sound and image and sound and color and, uh, yeah. and actually taking that into space and, um, you know, a kind of musical just giving a musical structure to the space itself. We're yeah. running out of time, so I just have one last quick question here um, that says, um, have you considered, uh, thank you for this illuminating explanation of your work, but have you considered how your explanation is yet another aspect of the process that adds to the audience's conception and appreciation of the work? Have I considered? This is something I'm always bat battling, um, uh, I suppose. I, I'm always worried that with this work being you know, having these layers, whether it communicates well, you know, I, I, it's, it's something that I'm always, for me, that's the biggest um, burden. I mean, it's like, is it, am I making, is it clear? Is it communicate? And I, I think often and oftentimes it, it isn't, it's not that clear people. It's, it's mm -hmm. kind of read in, in various different ways. It's not really read in those layers. So, yeah, it's it's the, the yes. Between like explaining the work and actually experiencing the work yourself, and yeah, and learning and allowing that that temporality to, you know, to allowing yourself to really engage with that temporality as the audience and to slow down. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I, I like that the idea. Of, it's, it's almost like what Reese was asking as well. It's this idea of timing. It's the fact that you know you have movement and that sort of temporality is it's a way of me uh, I'm sort of ex exploring how that's just a, it's a part of life that sort of that shift and impermanence it becomes a part of of life in some way um, yeah. Well, yeah 
thank you, Junior, so much. This has been wonderful. And um, thank you for really um, just um, in-depth um, insight into your work and, and your practice and, and your process. And, and thank you to the audience as well for your questions, which uh, were great to have. Um, and looking forward to the continuing the discussion uh, above and beyond and to seeing your new works um, as they unfold. And, um, you know, thank, thank you again for, for having us, um, Jane and Yale. And until thank next you. time, thank you, Junior. Yeah. yeah, thank you all. Thank you. All right, take care.